16 years ago, on this very day, we uploaded the very first episode of Mighty Car Mods. So today, we decided we would have a chat about some of our favourite Mighty Car Mods moments over the last 16 years. So let's get straight into it. Chasing Midnight was a feature film that we shot over in Japan with a Toyota Chaser? Is it called a Chaser? A Cresta, a Chaser, Cresta, I don't know. It's all the same platform. Anyway, uh, we decided to modify it. We didn't have much time. We're in a little shed in the back of Japan somewhere. And we decided that we we're going to paint it. And um, now what's the best way to paint a car? Well, this is the quickest way anyway. It was pretty amazing. We went to the local kind of parts store, bought a whole lot of paint, handed everybody a can each, and well, this is what happened. We've got 10 cans of paint and 10 people, and we're going to paint the entire car in five minutes. <laughs> Five minutes later, we've got this. It's been an epic day and um We've achieved so much. I think my favourite bit of the day was probably having 10 people paint the car because with one can each, it took five minutes to paint the whole car. Literally, it was five minutes. It was just an amazing transformation done really, really quickly it and was a really fun, fun car as it well. It was a lot of fun to do it and just seeing how much you can do just with some help from some other people, it was very, very enjoyable. Uh, a lot of enjoyment as well making the music for that and Chasing Midnight is a song that we still use regularly now in different episodes when things are happening. Speaking of music, uh, another favourite moment of ours was inventing the iPod before Apple did. We think we've just invented something that no one's ever thought of in the history of mankind or beast ever. Even the dinosaurs didn't come up with this. They got frozen though. They got owned by the weather. But this is pretty exciting what's about to happen because this is the first time ever that we have invented. Yep, that's going. This is a portable music device. I will call it the iPod. Turns out I actually invented the iPod a few years before this, nearly a decade before this. I invented an iPod, I put it in the boot of my Gemini. You had a computer, it didn't worked you? unless you went over a speed bump too fast and then it just shocked everything and then it would turn off. So look, the iPod's better, this was an improvement yet again, and that's sort of how products get refined over the years. ModMax was one of the best and most exciting projects that we did. We were actually contacted by Roadshow, are they called Roadshow? I think so, yeah. That actually made the Mad Max Fury Road films, and they approached us directly and said, hey, can you do something? I think a lot of the cars had been destroyed overseas and they wanted something that A, could kind of help promote the film, but also could appear at cinemas and stuff like that. Uh, you probably know the story well, we got an S15 that was a stat write-off put a V8 in it from a Commodore and then did a bunch of skids. But on the very last day, uh, we had a guy, Sean Genders, come down, uh, who's a friend of ours, but also worked on the film doing prosthetics and special effects and stuff like that. He helped kind of do a bit of a makeover. We looked, uh, we looked pretty crazy. And then the previous week, we had spent collecting mannequins. Do you remember, we had a ute we had and to we drive were around Sydney. We were driving mannequins. around Sydney collecting mannequins and then also clothing them, uh, which was a big part of it as well. And the idea was just to mow them down. And just that, to car, them that down. car was 
was and has been such an awesome vehicle and so useful and so fun that we've still got it, it still works, it's just an absolute monster. Unfortunately, our camp has been overrun. Now, we've tried many different options to try and placate the situation, to try and defuse the situation, but unfortunately none of that has worked, so we're left with only one option. It stood the test of time, and every year or so it does usually find its way onto TV in a you know TV commercial or something. But yeah, Mod Max, it's gone through a few changes over the years, but it's still up there with, I think, one of the most iconic Mighty Car Mods cars so, of all time. Speaking of things getting mowed down, uh, a little blue hatchback got mowed down by a crusher. So many times we cried, but I always thought we'd be alright. But all good things must come to an end, and I'll be on my own again. Pick me up when I was down, the windows down, we drove around. When I was lost, you'd take me never felt so young and free the big blue sky the big blue sea i'm gonna miss you my little blue t-u-r-d but all good things must come to an end and i'll be on my Why, 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 so, did, why did that happen, Martin? The blue turd got crushed uh, because I lost a race. That's yeah, that's basically the so story. But the, the blue Some turd people was, were actually emotional about it, including you, which so was strange. The blue turd was a Daihatsu, uh, and as you've seen even recently, there's been a lot of Daihatsu slash copies of Daihatsu stuff going on. But that car does hold a special place for us because it is literally what started Mighty Car Mods, this little Daihatsu Sio Cure, whatever you want to call it, mirror yeah. thing. Uh, and the blue turd was was my favourite by far of those because. Tiny car, absolute nugget, cheap and cheerful, Crush use it. no fuel, huge Crush engine. Ju and we, we crushed it, but that's fine. It, the car was was pretty, actually pretty rough. The so. spirit of it though has lived on. Uh, if you've seen Racing Midnight by now, you should have, it came out on Christmas day. Uh, that's why we use, or that's why we purchased and used that blue car, so exactly. that the blue turd could live on. A four door turd. A four door turd. Who would have thought, man? <laughs> Anyway, so next up we're going to move on, uh, we're going to go back to Japan and this little special car is the Nissan March Super Turbo. I drive these streets with neon memories You said you'd be here, but now I'm alone Are you really gone? Take me back I gotta say, driving this car down the highway, we were shocked at just how well it went. Yep. 
at speed. Yep. Uh, we were on a track at one point, uh, Japan's version of Mexico. 200 k's an hour we were going Easily. in this car. Yep. Uh, we were trying to chase a GTR and it felt it felt as stable as any Audi or any kind fine. of supercar thing. It just felt amazing. Um, I would say that's a heroic little car. It truly represents the essence of what it means to be mighty. At the very end, we took it down to Tokyo, and that is the song that we did uh, with Glenn Cunningham, who's a friend of mine who's a finalist on The Voice, Take Me Back to Tokyo, which I really I really love that song, and it's really quite emotional when we finally get to the city. There was a couple of setups that we had to do, including getting time-lapse shots of the car in a very busy walkway. I think it was like Shibuya or near that, near the big... Uh, crossing, wherever yeah. that is, I think it's Shibuya. Anyway, uh, we were down one of the back streets there and there was this area which was sort of the road ended and then there was like a pedestrian. So we were parked right at the end of that spot. So it's not really a thoroughfare, but it just looked so good. Yes. But actually parking there was challenging because a couple of trains arrived, a few Shinkansens arrived at like 11 o'clock at night and it just got pumped with people and I couldn't move the cars. I was like, uh oh. We were stuck there. <laughs> I nearly ran yeah. some dude over because he, he was on his phone and didn't see me and then like ran to the car and was like, hey, I'm like, sorry man. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that was a bit bit awkward. So. Uh, one of the things people had asked us about is the very last shot of the film is a shot of the steering wheel and Marty holding the steering wheel. And then all of a sudden the camera kind of goes out the window and flies off in you know, like flies off into space basically. And so a lot of people were saying, how did you actually get that shot? Uh, we did a transition from a handheld drone shot to an aerial drone shot. So I used the drone like a camera, so I'm holding it by its legs, pointing it like this at the steering wheel, then slowly getting out of the car, still using it as a camera, pointing it at Marty, and then uh, someone else then, our friend Blakey, winds on the power, and as he winds on the power, I let go of it, and then that reveals that. So um, just a little tech thing, just because so GoPros cool. are meant to be used in a certain way, or drones are meant to be used in a certain way, doesn't mean that you have to use them like that. You can do all sorts of mad, creative stuff with them, like a shot like that. And speaking of things that are being used in a way they're not supposed to, blow off valve on a push bike. So there's a lot of argument, people saying you can run a blow off valve on this car, you can't run it on that car, you can actually run it on anything you like, as we're about to demonstrate. With the blow-off valve even working on a push bike, it's time to lay the argument to rest once and for all and forget that it ever happened. Also world first, right? Maybe? <laughs> Let's claim world first on that one, Martin. <laughs> uh, that was a video that blow-off valves used to have about as much mystique as a dragon. People, yeah. everybody would be like, blow-off valves, blow-off valves. Now it's kind of less of a thing because, you know, is it a diverter valve, is it a blow-off valve, is it a whatever? I still love the sound of them. They obviously still have a mechanical function, but we made that video at a time where there was just like a height of interest in it blow valves, hence why that video has had so many views. It was also a way of telegraphing that your car was turbo, because unlike every second v VW Audi badge thing that's got a turbo on we it We wrecked now, that. Um, well, that's true. We talked uh, but back then, not as much stuff was turbo, so if you wanted to differentiate your Sylvia that basically looked the same, um, it would make a, a, a freaking whoosh noise, yes. and you'd be like, oh, it's turbo. That was kind of more than the blow-off valve itself. And I think there was probably a bit of blowback then because of that because it was if you wanted to blow off valve it meant your car was turbocharged which meant maybe it was more complicated meant it probably cost more money it meant you also were paying for more insurance mm. so in a way it was kind of a bit of a badge of honor so by us making an instructional showing people um, successfully just how to run a real blow off valve on a little Daihatsu was actually I, I don't know maybe it was controversial at the time what I would say about that though is that a lot of people at that time were legitimately buying these muffler whistle things yeah and doing the electric blower valves like this one that we did on the Honda Civic. They sound terrible. So what we wanted to do is like, can you actually physically make the blower valve work? And this man, because he's very, very smart, actually worked out a way of compressing PVC, air in a pipe. PVC pipe, basically, yeah. And just fill it with a little um, air compressor. And that stuff was more expensive then too. Now you can buy that stuff for five bucks off whatever website. Back then it was like, oh, okay, it's expensive to make this happen, but it worked. And the idea of kind of changing gears on a mountain bike and then a blow off valve <laughs> goes at the same time, it's just dumb and it's, I'm all for it's it. It's totally silly. Uh, speaking of something that's not as silly, 250 tips was just one of the <laughs> biggest videos we'd ever done. It actually took years to make. It I did take kicked years. kicked off the idea for that when? Like, uh, we, we kicked it off probably about two or three years before it actually came out. And we just started assembling ideas. And I think we'd seen some videos that were like, 
the five best tips for your car, the seven best tips, and we're like, do we tw do we do 20? And then we just went, let's make it 250. A quarter and of I, a thousand. And I think there's like a, there's a comment on the top of that video that I'm really proud of. It says something like, we actually made the tips. Like a lot of people, yes. they will get other people's tips. Here's a video from them, a video from them, a video from them. Those 250 tips, they were either our tips or we created them uh, uniquely. Uh, and I'm, re I'm really proud of that because it was, yeah, it was a lot of work, years and years in the making. On that point, because I know some of you are interested in this whole YouTube thing, there was a time where you couldn't use other people's stuff. We never have. We've always tried to shoot our own thing, go and film it all ourselves. If we need a shot of a race car, we'll go get a shot of a race car. Some other people are okay with just using someone else's shot of a race car and saying, oh, it's Johnny's Fair shot. Fair use. Fair use, it's called. Um, yeah. And we've never it's actually... It's problematic sometimes. Yes, we've never actually done it. It's not as much of a thing in Australia as well. Like, the, the, the laws are a bit different with copyright. But anyway, so we've always got our own stuff. But 250 tips, as far as I know, is basically every single thing is something that we did, shot, or made specifically for that video. And Correct. it's probably 50-50. Do we yeah. make like a hundred tips and then have another? Yeah, we, we basically went through the archive and kind of went, you know, there was lots of videos, particularly in the early days of Mighty Car Mods, where it was a little bit different. Maybe there was kind of less adventure stuff happening. Like the first few years of Mighty Car Mods, like we didn't go, we're going off-roading. We weren't the best four-wheel driving channel in the world back then. No. We weren't the best motorbike channel in the world. No. Or the best gaming channel or the no. best boating channel. No. Uh, those things would all come later, yes. uh, if at all. Yes. Um, but um, but yeah, so we kind of went through that archive and found all of that stuff. And then there were just a bunch of tips that we wanted to add, so we would film those to supplement so you had new or old. And um, yeah, it took years. You can turn your car into a convertible in about 15 minutes. It probably won't be legal, but your power to weight ratio will go through the roof. One of my favourite experiences of making Mighty Car Mods is when we do the feature films. So that is the biggest stuff that we've done in Japan, I mean even visiting LA for the car scene, uh, going to New Zealand, but one of the favourite ones that we did was turbos and tubs. So that was actually a piece of content uh, that we were sponsored by Volkswagen to go to the big Worthersee event in Austria. And so rather than just turning up to the event, we decided we wanted to kind of take our own car. So we got a two-door Mark IV GTI, which I don't think we got in Australia, so that was kind of special. It I was. think Marty found that yep. on the internet. It was pretty cheap too. We, we fixed it up in a workshop. It was the cheapest one that we could find, but what stands out to me from that trip was, well, there was two things. First of all, getting to Austria and seeing all of the cars there was absolutely amazing. And then we really were was. actually invited to go out on stage, these doors open, there's smoke everywhere, and they kind of presented us as like, we've come the furthest, we came from Australia yeah, to modify and, a car, and which And that was wasn't even amazing. necessarily like, oh, hey Volkswagen, you know, here's your, here's your, your ticket through. Like, those people that were running that show that actually came and saw it and saw that it had an Australian flag on it were like, sorry, what? And we're like, oh, we came from Australia and we built this three days ago and then road yes. tripped. And it was, they just thought it was a cool story. And it was that, I will never forget those driving roads. In the film, you can see it. And our car wasn't working that great, but it didn't matter, it made it. And I just remember it was like springtime through the like the bottom of these these mountains and just the most epic landscape I think I've ever seen. It's in my top top two or three with um, also the Hakoni Skyline, which we drove in the little oh, the, the, in the little oh, super in turbo. In the super turbo, which yeah. is another moment in itself. But on our way to Worthsee in Austria, uh, we'd gone through all of this red tape about getting our car certified and gone to the tour and done all this stuff. And we're like, why do you even have all of this stuff? As if anyone's going to pull you over. Within a minute or two of saying that, uh, we were pulled over by the police in Germany. Um, I, I opened the door and got out to face the person. I've since found out from reading the comments you're not meant to do that. Probably not. In Australia, to. you get out, have a Tim Tam, shake hands, out your gun, mate. Uh, turns out in other countries that might get you shot, so you're meant to stay inside your car. But I said hello. I speak a very small amount of German, but um, I showed him the international license that I had, uh, and then he revealed to us that, uh, well, this is what he said. Verkehrskontrolle, hallo, grüß euch. Habt ihr kurz einen Fahrzeugschein und die Zugangsbescheinigung für mich? Ja, Quatsch, Quatsch. Zugangsbescheinigung, Führerschein bräuchte ich, genau. Um, we speak English, okay. but my translator is in this car here. Okay, in this car? Yes. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, I only know very little, but... I need your driver license. An international sure. license? Yes. Okay. So, <lacht> soll ich übersetzen? Na, no, brauchst du nicht. Also normalerweise... Also die Jungs passen da schon ähm, rein ins Raster quasi mit Drogenkontrollen oder was auch immer. Ja. Ja. Ähm, die sind bei dir zu Besuch. Wie lange denn? Die sind hier bis nächsten Dienstag. Also wir fahren gleich zu VW rüber. Ja. Ähm, zum Wörthersee sind die eingeladen. Dann fahren wir noch nach Wolfsburg ins Werk für zwei Tage. Ach so, okay. Also ist das ähm, Arbeitsstoff für BMW oder was? Oder? Genau, das ist für die Beine. Das ist Arbeit. Für ja? mich ist es Urlaub, ja. Also ich begleite die Beine. Ja, okay. Dann habt eine schöne Zeit. Ja, alles klar. Ja. Danke, Danke dir. Ne? Ciao, ciao. Servus. Oh, everything's fine. Okay.
Thank you. Uh, Danke schön. Thank you. So it turns out that Marty and I uh, look like fit the profile of uh, drug user targets. We look like drug dealers. Uh, drug dealers slash drug <laughs> users, um, which is uh, which is not the case at all. But um, that was definitely a memorable moment on the roads of Germany. <laughs> we look like the kind of guys that deal drugs. We look like the kind of. We look like drug dealers. And you know what's funny? We had the tunes playing. We're doing these ones in you know, a modified GTI that's lowered on. Yeah, this. I mean, I'm just we're rolling along with hoodies, hats in a modified car. We don't look dodgy um, at all. And Black hoodies. On came the sirens. <laughs> um. <laughs> I love how honesty is as well. You look like the kind of guys that would deal drugs. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> so a memorable moment, but not necessarily for good reasons, was when the original Gramps uh, got there washed away are. in a massive and very quick and random rainstorm. So it was actually at the paint shop and it was pushed outside and then this enormous rainstorm came through and the painter didn't realise it was raining and he quickly tried to push it inside, but the whole bottom of the car was under about three or four inches of water. Got so fried. all the electrics um, got completely fried out of it and the whole car just got completely soaked. In a freak rainstorm that came and went in minutes, Gramps is drowned. It's enough water to trigger CCTV motion sensors for the entire painful time. Gramps has no windows, no panels, and no windscreen. It's enough water to soak you to the bone in seconds, and before too long, Gramps' seats are soaked through, his wiring underwater, and all the electronics that make him work are fried. Gramps is dead. I use that as an opportunity um, to try and make sort of lemonade out of lemons and just upgrade to a newer chassis, which was the Generation 4 Subaru Liberty, which happened to be Al's own car. So we didn't actually... And we that didn't, became Supergramps, We didn't right? mention that, yeah, it became Supergramps, but we didn't mention that at the time, but only uh, later when Supergramps, you know, went off into the sunset, we were like, oh, you're getting your car back, which is, um, which is pretty cool. But that was a crappy moment, but it's one of those examples where if you're served up something like that and it's just bad luck and stuff goes wrong, uh, then you can just, how can you turn this into something a bit better? And I really enjoyed driving Supergrams for about eight years, very reliably, 300 kilowatts, 400 horsepower at the wheels the whole time. No mechanical issues except for a drive shaft when I tried to race a V8 supercar. All right, I'm staged up. I'm just gonna, just gonna have to launch it so hard. I'm actually a bit nervous about this one. I just broke Supergrams. broke it like like I think my I have no gears he's killed super Gramps. it's dead he's dead super Gramps is dead oh my god is this a Subaru gearbox thing is it broken yeah drive shaft I don't know I think maybe gearbox like input shaft gearbox something bad Okay. Something bad. Um, is, it, uh, is it currently working? But I knew I'd have... No, it doesn't move. I knew I'd have to launch it hard, and so I think I went too hard. It, it bogged down, yeah, I felt and it. then it kind of pulled back and then bogged a second yeah. time, and you were still fully into it that second time. Yeah. I broke my car. Speaking of fried, um, Electric Space Wizard will go down in history as one of the most iconic Mighty Car Mods moments. So basically the idea was we wanted to do a simple dent repair. We didn't have a car that had any dents on it. Uh, you probably saw this moment where I kicked Super Grant. I, no, you it kicked just, the blue turd. Uh, sorry, dude, I kicked the, the blue turd. turd. Um, it, it just came out, really. It was just one of those ad-lib moments. We don't script stuff. So like sometimes when you've got to write some voiceover about technical things about engines, we write some notes. but. All of this stuff, like what we're doing now and every episode you ever see, we're just making it up as we go. Um, that was not uh, planned like that, uh, nor was the kick meant to be that excessive. I don't feel bad about Actually it, but, had, I, but I probably could have... I had a spare um, panel that was dented. The whole, the, we were going to repair... Did you? Yeah. We were, I bought another panel. Why didn't we just do that, that then? I don't know, because you kicked it. Okay. The idea was, hey, here's me. a panel uh, and we're going to fix it up. And it was a Daihatsu thing that was a bit scratched up and looked a bit shitty. Why didn't you tell me that? I did saved tell you. No, that would have saved it. Anyway. <laughs> then it wouldn't have turned into this moment. So the kind of this, the electric space wizard was born out of this idea that so much bog and filler was used, and it smelt so strong and so crazy you transported that us. we decided to you know do this little scene that was transported. Uh, 
Um, that part there, uh, we worked with our friend uh, Gavin Tyrrell, Iron Gav, who's a very, very clever graphics guy who I've um, been friends with for 20 years. I first met him, I walked into like a post room and edit suite. He was listening to Iron Maiden and editing a film that he was making about clowns eating people. I was like, we're gonna, we're just, we're gonna get along great. And he's done the intro graphic scenes of uh, Mighty Car Mods all the way along. So anyway, that was Electric Space Wizard. We filmed it um, in a garage of a place that you were renting, which I think has been knocked down now and turned into apartment yeah, blocks. It's got we hung down. a green sheet behind us yep. to green screen ourselves. And covered my motorbike And covered in foil. your motorbike in alfoil. Not a whole lot of money required for a very entertaining we enough to basically a motorbike, a green screen, tin foil, and a cucumber, and that was it. That's everything that we needed in terms of props. Um, speaking of cucumbers and big things... Did uh, you tell them what you did with the cucumber? Well, don't, they'll work it out. Just okay. go and watch it. Do, You'll work it out. Have a look it's, at that actual scene. You'll work it out. And try and spot the cucumber. We also uh, we hired those um, we hired those costumes. They cost 50 bucks. So the foil, the screen... I mean, I reckon the whole thing was probably made for about 200 bucks. Like, it's pretty basic, and I think it's probably one of the best the best moments of Mighty Cum Mods of all time. Speaking of things that are big and hard and hard to beat is his golf R at the drags. This next car scares me. This is the BMW M5, an absolute beast of a car. And I gotta say, this one here, I'm, I'm a little worried about this race, I gotta be honest. Um, he's right next to me. Uh, he's staged up, this is it. Let's go, oh, he's got me on the launch. Can I reel him in? He's pulling. He's on it. Oh! That was an excellent race. That was excellent. And a chop by the BMW. Sorry, what are those times again, please? And how did the BMW go? Whoa, whoa, sorry, are you saying the Golf won that? By one tenth. We beat the M5! I'm, oh, he's behind me right now. There go the hazard lights. Wow, he got me on the launch, but look, the way it works here, from line to line, that's a win for the Golf. You know what? I was surprised and shocked at just shocked. how fast you can make a Golf in such a short amount of time. I know a lot of people think they're boring, blah, blah, blah. They are fast, they're really efficient. It was really cool to then kind of organise this shoot where we went, let's try and race as many cars as we can. We had a Lamborghini, there was a Stinger, there was a GTR, there was a Audi. whole bunch of cars that yep. just came down and uh, the idea was to try and give them a race, which we did. Back to uh, back. Lack to back lap and, um, lap. and it just did it over and over and over and over again. Uh, fantastic car and um, did regret it. Don't own Golfs anymore, but, but did like, enjoy it for the time. Fuel pump, turbo, cooling mods, flash, go. Yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. And uh, of course, it's straight line speed we're doing it yeah, because you can do suspension and wheels and other stuff. But uh, two days and a bunch of parts, we put yeah, Revo really parts impressive. on it and you can just full send Really, it. really impressive. Speaking of full send, one of my favourite cars that we have ever done, surprised me actually, uh, was Too Sexy. And one of the moments that I think about the What most a nugget is also drag racing that thing because I had never intended to drag race it but we're having it at Mighty Carmel's Nationals and the, the drag strip was there and they said oh you can run a car if you want to run it so I'm like well let's take Too Sexy so it you know was just set up for whatever street and um, took it to the took it to the line and just gave it and I was it did like a 12.6 or something that's which doesn't sound a lot but that's a front wheel drive car with 230 kilowatts at the wheels <laughs> here we go Mod Max versus Too Sexy Too Sexy just such a such a winner of a car. It's got to come back a bit. Here we go, we're staged. We're doing this, people. All right, let's do this. It's just a little nugget with a 2.4 litre stock engine and a turbo on the front of it. That just a short time previously was like an auto salon full sex spec car, you know, and so to convert it into what we did and get the performance we did, unfortunately, you know, 
it ended up uh, as a bit of a smoke show, didn't it, uh, that one? Oh yeah, it ended up blowing a head gasket, but it blew a head gasket at Sydney Motorsport Park. It also did a pretty impressive time, considering I'd never driven it there ever before. Put semis on it and just sent it. Again, very, very fun, but that's a very, very hard track and it's hard on cars, and if there's a weakness like that, you will find it. You know what else did a good quarter mile time? Mod Max. Uh, oh, really when good. We were racing, basically we did this series where we were racing a V8 supercar uh, with Chaz Mosto. We took a whole bunch of our cars down to Western Sydney International Dragway. Mod Max did really, didn't it do like a 12 something? It did as well? a 12 at it, but also it launched. Like yes. It, the muddy, it had muddies on it. We just took it as it was. And it just launched. And I remember looking at it going, wow, that's really moving. Like it bagged up and just went and did a really respectable time. Because it doesn't make a heap of power, it doesn't need to. <laughs> My mud tyres, completely inappropriate for this kind of racing. Here we go. No idea what's going to happen. Yes, going down there! You got totally chopped, but you got 12 9. 12 9 is impressive. To but do skids. it slides and it's great. Now, yep. speaking of too sexy, I, as you've probably worked out, I got a bit of a thing for like sex bet cars and auto salon cars. Why? Uh, Mr. VTEC was a classic. Uh, Marty pretending to just put stuff in the car while actually smashing it. Uh, well, that, I mean, that's oh. not the jacking point, you. Uh. It's in the car. It's in the car. You. The car now. You. Was that accident? No. I thought we'd just have a look underneath it. What do you mean? We are looking like underneath it. Like without breaking it, dude. Why? To see what colour it was underneath. Uh, there you go. It was like blue. Uh, Careful of it, because now we've got to repair that. Oh yeah, no worries. Come on, mate. You asked me to put it in the car, so I okay. put it in the car. Uh, we also you asked me to put it on the hoist, so I put it on the hoist. Remember when I bought the Civic that had the casino in the boot? Yeah. That one was pretty incredible as well. Yeah. But nothing, <laughs> nothing at all can take the crown from Twisted. Twisted was one of the most incredible cars. Um, I know I did end up running it into a wall, uh, which was a big hit. No, it's under steering. Uh, as you can see, that was a big hit. Mm. Um, it's probably time to confess, Martin. Uh, so, the dance scene and that sequence, uh, I'm going to reveal now to you for the very first time. YouTube's probably going to put an ad in now just to be cheeky. But I'm going to reveal for the very first time, it was a stunt double doing the dancing. So I did oh. some of the dancing and then we'd kind of work out the sequence with Jaden Rodriguez, who's another uh, um, Australian YouTuber. He came to kind of choreograph And that. then I did the backflip. Uh, and I would run along and do that and then someone else would do the flip and then I would kind of land. Uh, I don't know how to do the this, magic. like this moment right now. I didn't know how to do that. Uh, and then apparently people reckon that I dented the roof. Wasn't it already dented? Uh, yeah, sure. Was it? I, don't I actually know. can't remember. I think you dented it. Did I dent it? I think so. I'm pretty sure I dented no, it. No, it. It, was already, it was already pretty flogged, but you absolutely dented it. Um, that <laughs> car still exists, it's still around. Um, occasionally, I still see it on the street. That's and, great. Um, I like to see those things still around. The other thing that's still around, and it's one of my favourite cars of all time that we've ever done, is the little Daihatsu Mira from Key to the City. Come on, man. It looks like it's been in some weird ram raid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Look, it's got like a... <laughs> TV and anything on it. It's remote control. This is, dude, this is, this is turbo and four wheel drive, look. Oh all yeah, time. so it's just like a GTR then? It is, dude, it's the same as a GTR. It's Japanese, it's all wheel drive, and it's gonna do mad skids. Oh, Martin, what a, what a mad car. So key to what the city, car. we went to Japan, we had a weekend, we literally arrived on Friday and we're leaving Sunday night, it was that long. Uh, we'd arranged to meet up with the 88s who had the little workshop um, in Asaikawa. And they said, there's an event on Sunday morning, be there if you want, and you can use our shed and we'll hang out with you for a couple of hours. So I think on like Saturday afternoon, we drove down there in the little stock mirror and we drilled out the suspension, 
we um we lowered it. We just did some silly some silly mods basically, and took this three hundred dollar bit of scrapu, as Mr. Sato said. Scrapu. Scrapu. It was in his scrap pile. He was going to send it to scrap. He bought it at an auction, but then sent it to scrap. Um, and down uh, to a drift event. Down to a drift event. Yeah. And. Just sent it and had the best time and we were lucky because it rained, there was rainbows. We had a drone, a really early drone where you couldn't actually see what you were filming. You just, you had, just had to put it in a, the sky and hope you're pointing it at something. A GoPro 3 or 4 or something hanging from the bottom and just, and just look and just hope you got something. We got some really cool interesting shots before it crashed. Um, and then we... What was amazing about that, that scene of the film is that when we turned up, I was shocked to see this was as grassroots as you get. It was just a bit of asphalt with cars drifting around. There and was potholes and there stuff. There didn't appear to be any kind of real formal organisation. No, but it want. had been pouring with rain and we're like, we only have this afternoon to get the, the last bit of our film. For a moment, all the clouds cleared up and um, these cars would come drifting along. In the background, there'd be thick grey clouds but we would be in sunlight and it was just perfect conditions. Those of you, I know lots of people watch Mighty Car Mods are into photography and into camera and stuff. It was just the play of light, the dark, the depth, yeah. cars sliding around. It was just really awesome. It was a really, really uh, magical time. We've had a lot of fun um, drifting cars that aren't supposed to be drifted and another example of that is also two little trucks which are very close to our heart which is he finally the, Daihatsu, a truck. the Daihatsu Midget truck. That's a ute. And my K truck. That's and the ute. K truck is surprisingly capable but a lot of fun. It was just stuck in my head as a very very fun moment was when we took the Midget and the K truck and I think Mod Max as well on that day and just sent them on a wet skid pan. Alright truck, this is where you're really going to be at an advantage with your diff lock. Drift truck. That was so that good. So good. good. Job. <laughs> that was unreal. Well done. What a man. sick little truck, man. <laughs> the best. I can't compete with that. Yeah, you'd be right. I believe, dude. You have you have the driving skills. Like what I have in the, I turboed my shit box. I think you have in commitment to the full send. God. I think I I I think I think the midget's gonna surprise you. Uh, in a we way, need a to has never surprised you before. <laughs> we need to rename this the tricycle. Oh, was it up one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> no way. All right, little midget, you've done a great job. Let's see if you can get sideways. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, little midget. Yes, well done, little midget. So weird doing the handbrake on the wrong side. The little midget, just like, 
spinning around and around and around. It's just a fun little car. Um, we talk about this a lot, and I guess in a lot of ways it's kind of the spirit of Mighty Car Mods. We're all about trying to have some fun with it. If you bring a supercar that you've had someone else modify to a Mighty Car Mods meet, people are going to have a look at it, but they're really going to crowd around the nugget that is just done on the cheap, built with friends. Like, that's kind of what it's all about uh, for us. Um, obviously, some projects are bigger. Some are smaller, but one of the biggest projects that we've embarked on recently, and really it's like a big lineage of project, is Marty's from Gramps to Super Gramps to what we kind of call Hyper Gramps yeah. now, the Lavorg. Yep. And just it's sitting on the spot, Martin, and just. Yeah. So after we converted it uh, to six speed manual, which no Lavorgs are, uh, we took it to the skid pan as well just to do some testing. and. We managed to get it, which you can't always do, you know, with the diff controller and stuff, to do pirouettes. So basically, you're not, you're not, no forward motion. It's not a donut, or it's kind of a donut. You're just going around one wheel. Well, yeah, it, it's spinning on a centre yeah. axis yeah. rather than kind of doing this. Because it, it's it requires there. drive from all four wheels to do it, and uh, it's the weird feeling, and it actually actually makes you feel a bit seasick. But it's very cool to look at and very very fun when you manage to do it. I've only seen a couple of Subarus do it before, but I really really liked it, and it, it was just a nice uh, a nice underline of that project of getting it going. Oh yeah, man! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that was before we made it the monster that it is today, so I'd uh, like to take it back and try again. My favourite Subaru moment of all Mighty Car Mods is actually not any of Marty's cars, it's the Subaru route that we did with Roadkill. So it's only been two days of work and we have successfully created a Subaru route. A two-day build and a two-door WRX ute that runs on ethanol. We don't know what the roadkill guys are going to think, but we absolutely love it. We've gone from this to this. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Mighty Car Mods Super Root. All right, man. I'm, I'm loving what you've done up the front here. Yep. Like and this flapper. This tray looks like something they could have and should have actually made. I'd, I'd own one. I would own one as well. I would own one. It's awesome. And now we've got a little bit of like weather protection back here. It still looks like it's going to be relatively nice in there for whoever ends up uh, behind the wheel. What a mad ute. Awesome ute, man. Well done. Very happy with our Mighty Mods ute. I just love watching the turbo at the bonnet. It's a visual feast. It is. And then we made you guys a ute. We I brought, see that! We brought a little bit of Australia all the way to you! Wow. This is pretty good! Was this a WRX? It, it was, it yeah. Is still, kind is of. It, is it all wheel drive? Yeah. It is. Yeah. And now it is a Subaru route. We got a, I don't know if it was an email or a call from, I don't know if it was the Motor Trend people or it was Freiburger. They contacted you originally. It was a lot of fan, it was actually fans who were commenting on both videos around the same time, so Roadkill's videos when they were on YouTube only, yeah. and then ours, and they were saying, oh man, you guys should do something, you guys should do something, and it was just over and over and over doing so much, so many comments, every video would be a comment and saying, there was hook so, up with Roadkill. So many emails and so many calls trying to work it out, and our thing was always just like, as long as both the videos are freely available, now that was easy for us because our videos are freely available anyway, they were going through a bit of a paywall thing at the time and I think uh, I think something happened there because they ended up putting their video behind a paywall but then they released it again or something. It came back or a some version kind, of Some it. kind of drama or something kind of happened there. Came but uh, turning up to LA, we had some friends with us uh, there as well. So we had, um, who, uh, Miles Stinton was there. Yeah, we had Stinton, uh, we had um, Workshop Manual Ian, we yep. had our mate, our mate Hopko, we had Benny uh, and we, we basically just, we just smashed through it as Two quickly or three as we could. I think Woody was there as well. We just smashed through it as quickly as we possibly could. We didn't have much time because also with the travel time coming from Australia, you go, we'll do it in a week. Actually, you lose two days either in getting there. Yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. like a 20 something hour flight or 30 hours by the time you go door to door. So but the car turned out great. Like, I, was, I think that's another iconic Mighty Car Mods build. Such a good one. Um, and their Impala was awesome. That's the first time I've driven such a high powered piece of shit. It was uh, which was just classic unreal. roadkill, by the way. One, like wheel, just... one wheel drive, and we took it for a lap. You see, and I think their video where we take it for a lap just around the street near the, the shop that they'd put it together in the car park of. And I just remember getting it and being like, wow, four yeah. of us in it, and it just it just took off like just I did not baking expect. Ties. And they really liked the WRX, which was interesting because it's not really their thing, but I think by the end of it, they're like, oh, okay, this is Well, they thought cool. we were going to be coming in a Miata or an MX-5 because yeah. I think we posted something on Instagram and they were like, oh, they thought it was a T. And so I think when we turned up with something that kind of 
was not an MX-5. Uh, that's always uh, a, bit of, <laughs> a bit of a treat. I remember the steering wheel actually cut up my hands because it had yeah. kind of that... The Impala had... I don't know if you call it baker light or what you call yeah, it. It's classic. like a resin steering wheel, but it had chunks out of it. So when I'm like drifting around the corner like this, as I let go of the steering wheel, it comes through my hand, it's like notching, and it was actually <laughs> cut up all my fingers off. It was what, <laughs> what a piece of shit. We also, and there's a photo somewhere when we were driving down the highway out of LA, um, someone saw us and recognised us, and we handed them uh, some merch right. or gave them a high five. And that two hour drive from, you know, from the middle of LA into San Diego, it's supposed to be, it ended up taking all night. I don't think we got in until like one in the morning because the, the, the car just kept dying, the Impala that is. Yep. Um, you know, torches for headlights, which is great for the, for the fun and drama of it. And it was a great experience, but that's legit because sometimes people go, oh, that stuff's staged. Nah, nope. no, <laughs> it's that, just, that's legit. you're just sending whatever junk you've got and going for it. One of my other favorite moments is uh, Mighty Carmods becoming the world's best four-wheel driving channel. Uh, the adventures that we did, Key to the Mountain and Key to the Sea, were adventures that we did with a little Suzuki Jimny that we'd done a whole makeover on. Um, of course, doing the build of that, there'd been all sorts of dramas because we had issues with engines and had issues with parts. The little K-truck, <laughs> though, always just... It just kept going. All right, so that, I reckon, is the most hectic hill we've got so far, man. Definitely. I reckon, because it's such a narrow wheelbase, there's a big dip on the right, and I reckon if I hit that, I'm going to bottom out my subframe, and then I'll be like this way in a hole. So I think I'm actually better off. Sort if of you hit to that, the left. you'll go over. Yeah, I'm 100%. better off staying to the left because I think like those those tracks sort of use the middle and then use the left. Yeah. But that's pretty gnarly, especially you can see the rocks. You lose heaps of grip on the rocks, don't you? Yeah, I reckon just stick to the left, and when you get near like three quarters of the way up, hook hard right. Because that see how the track kind of goes around to the right, yeah. so that you're staying on the plane of the track rather than staying on that angle, and then your car's going to be going over. So I reckon follow that middle line, go around that big hole, and then up to the right. Cool. You going to spot me? Yeah, I'll hang with you. So I'll just be on the radio. We'll get you get you up there. All right, here we go. All right, mate. Start to slow. By far the steepest hill we've done so far. Here we go. Yeah, looking good just yet. Yeah, Take your left hand down a little bit. Hug the edge. Ooh. Ooh. Big rocks right, now over to the right of it. Yep, cool. That's it. Oh. Oh. Left hand down, keep going. Yeah, you're up, dude. You're good. Fantastic. That was wild. Lots of sharp, craggy rocks, too. Go and in. your ground clearance is literally on making it by millimeters. <laughs> All right, mate, coming up. Oh man, looks good. I'd take a similar line to what I did, I reckon. Looking good. Yeah, hug that left edge, man. The grip's amazing. That's awesome. And across to the right, because as well, just to avoid those big rocks. Oh, dude, the Jimny's up. No worries at all. Around on that loose stuff, hey? Yeah, it's crazy. Just trying to keep my thumbs on the outside of the steering wheel because it just thrashes around so much. It was the a little truck, truck that just kept battling. Seriously impressive. So I was looking for a K truck for a while. I was actually looking for a tip truck and he talked me into getting a K truck, but they were a bit expensive, so I was kind of on the fence. And then one popped up secondhand. It already had the muddies on it and a few other mods, like a little lift kit. I'm like, that's actually pretty cool and useful for doing some off road stuff. So um, it went more or less stock the first time, yep. uh, just with some muddies on it. Then the second adventure, I turboed it by then. Uh, and both were a lot of fun. And so I, good. You I had just, a little bucket you would just hang over there. Yeah, well, I didn't right. know how to stop the air filter from getting full of water because the air the air intake system on those trucks is actually quite low because they they're not designed to have a big waiting depth. They're good for puddles, but not like, you know, one metre deep things. So you've got to get the intake up and out. So put a tube out next to the next to the door with a pot on it, but then you've got to cover that. So you're just putting a bucket on it. Yes. It worked really well. It was loud, but it worked really, really well. And we took it on sand as well when we did the key to the sea. And got bogged. It did I think way we both better than the Jimny. I think though, because I was using muddies, and I would know this as the co-creator of the best four-wheel driving channel. Using all terrains. When you when you air down muddies because the sidewall's so thick, it doesn't give you as much traction. The cars are light. Is so that they, right? They're light, and, and they someone can't. Someone from twenty four seven, let us know if that's correct. <laughs> they please. can't bag out as much. So, but if you go too low with the pressure, you just the, the tire comes off. So it's a it's a problem for little light cars like what we had. But the adventure itself was a lot of fun. Getting the truck home was something I'll never forget. I couldn't keep speed on the highway. That's a motorway that's like 110 k's an hour. And the only way I could keep the speed limit was by drafting trucks. 
the wind resistance is so high on that little brick that yeah. if the truck broke up the air, I could sit behind it at 110 or whatever it was. Yeah. The second I tried to overtake, bro, you just lose half yeah. the power. So, a oh, big shout out to our mate uh, Blake, by the way, Blake Castle, uh, who uh, helped us by shooting those episodes. And we also had Isaac with us uh, and um, Benny. Benny, the um, Benny who had a machete with him which was great because one of the nights when, remember that night when <laughs> we were camping oh, yeah. in our little swags uh, and a gentleman came out of the bushes uh, in bare feet with a golf club and a dog and asked us if he could sleep with us at that night. Uh, and we, we'd said, no, thank you. And then he let us know that he'd be back. And the recovery um, vehicle we which had. Is not great. So the recovery vehicle that did all those trips as far and even more hectic stuff than we did was like an LDV, just like yes. a basically stock LDV, which and that's was interesting. What was dragging us out, you yeah, know, because and it, it was capable. I think yeah. after he sold it, it popped in engines. Oh, really? Oops. About, oh, well. about time. Uh, anyway, so a massive thank you to Blakey. I have a, I have a few memories of uh, Blake, but one of them that stands out to me, uh, he came and helped us shoot our Japan films as well, but one of them that stands out to me is when we did, we we're doing this kind of 90s or early 2000s battle where we were doing Marty Sierra versus an NX Coupe and the idea was that we would kind of... Um, oh, Sarah, to what is it? Not to it's a Toyota, Toyota Sierra. In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, it is the budget modified car challenge. Yes. Weirdest car. Yeah. The, the going butterfly. A, a very things. strange thing. But because of the era of those cars, it was like, oh, we'll dress 90s or early 2000s. And so then I put on all my stuff and we're about to shoot. And then Blake's like, when are you putting your stuff on? <laughs> and I was like, I'm already wearing it. And he goes, no, that's just your normal clothes. And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I saw a comment yesterday, Martin. Um, I was looking at the very first episode of Mighty Car Mods and the top comment says, I love how the 90s in Australia has been going for 25 years. <laughs> Brutal. It's not Australia's <laughs> fault, it's just my fault. It's just my fault. But uh, anyway, a couple of cool things happened during that battle. One of them, uh, which Marty came up with, which was really cool, was a drone race. So you could only view your cars from a drone angle from above and try and race them, which was really cool. Basically, there's a drone up in the sky. We're getting an output of that drone's camera here on this screen. A live feed. He cannot look up out the windscreen. We've got a circuit that Marty's got to get around. I will be timing it. Every time he looks out the windscreen, he loses a point. Are you ready, Martin? No, not really. I don't know how this is going to go. We'll be fine. OK, we'll you be count fine. me in. Ready? OK. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh this is so weird. A tiny bit of lag. I'm gonna turn now. <laughs> I'm not on the road. I can't look up, can't look up, can't look up, can't look up. Oh, we're not even on the road. It's really oh. Oh. oh, he's looked up. That's yeah, a point gone. Point. He's looked, looked up point. twice. Two points gone. Oh my god. Shut up. This is really hard. Oh, it went under the record button, so I couldn't see what I was doing. <laughs> ah, it's just the tiniest bit of lag, it's like you're driving. Where am I? Am I good? Yeah man, you're great. That's okay, I got this, I got this. I'm gonna get back to where we started, I'm not gonna hit your car, I promise. I just gotta get across that start line. Am I here? Am I good? And stop! <laughs> well <done>. seconds. <laughs> 54 seconds, Martin, good job. Uh, and, um, and secondary to that was the tug of war, mainly because Marty believed that he would actually have a chance and I dragged his ass so far down the road that his car then exploded. Good. Three, two, one, go. Sound a bit familiar? Oh, dude. I'm pretty sure that, uh. Oh, dude. Yeah. It's not getting better. Yeah. The only bit from this car that isn't rusted that was worth saving was the motor, but the motor was already very, very tired before it got here. So, um, I'd say that's a death sentence for this little, uh, 4E, whatever it is. 
best smoke show. Uh, it was, I was so good. And we sold the car that Arvo, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Like, we're we just like, no, because we're not taking that back to the shed. Like, that is not coming It still back worked, and we just sold it. I think I put a post on Facebook or something saying, who wants a Toyota Sarah? If you get it right now, you can have it cheap. And it, like, was, was gone. And it's still working. It's still getting around. I think we've got engine swapped, and uh, it's still going. What a weird nugget. Um, Let's talk about cars that are not still going quickly. Cars that have come into our lives and unfortunately have, or fortunately, fortunately. have left us um, the Purge Bro. So, first of all, because I know there's going to be some Purge Bro weird beards out there, um, over in France, we saw a bunch of Purge Bros and some of them were really cool. Your one, not so much, but. Cheapest on the market. Let's have a quick chat about the Purge Bro music video, Martin. Tell us what's going on there. So, when we try to, you know, educate and explain and tell people a little bit about cars, educate sometimes the, the, best, the best way to do that is, is through is song. With song. So what we were trying to kind of sum up here is less about the technicalities of that one, that blazingly amazing 1.6 litre engine, which apparently is actually quite good. Uh, and we were trying to really get to the essence of what it is, the people that drive them, um, the fact that apparently you can get drugs that have a Peugeot logo on. Can you? <laughs> yes. Is that why there's a drug with a Peugeot logo yeah. on it? And all the dancing? There was heaps of European cars on yeah. drugs. That was the thing. Again, back in the 90s with those clothes, that was a thing. So now, anyway, I, now that summarized. was, I'm just going to go, that film clip was inspired by our mate James. It was. Um, he had taught us uh, a bunch of things. Firstly, uh, he'd been talking about hard style. Um, and I do believe, James, how long did I get, honestly, to make the music? Ten, was it 10 minutes? 15 minutes. So I'm like, I'm going to make some hard style. I've never done it before. Uh, and then I'm like, I'll see you in 15 minutes. That's James, our camera guy. Hello over there. Uh, and so I made the music and then I checked it with him. He came and had a listen. Uh, you approved it, right? Astonished. Astonished. There it was. And then we go, great, let's make a music video. Now, what inspired the music video was that whenever James goes to these hard style events, um, and no doubt there's some of you going to these hard style events as well, there's, there's a few things happening, Martin. There's the, what have we learned? So there's oh, the light show. There's light shows, there's a picnickers, there are TNs, which is Nike TNs, the yep. sp specific shoe. And if you look closely at the, the, the video, I am wearing TNs because they are the best. Did you borrow them or did we buy them? Oh, we, we, borrow, we, we, borrow, we hired some shoes we from some skanky guy person. A oh, guy called Alfred. And Alfred's favourite thing to do is to ring you, tell you a joke and immediately hang up. That's Alfred. Okay. And so, he wears TNs. So for those of you that are going to these things, picnicking, is when you're so nanged that you just sit on the ground and you yeah. don't dance anymore. Yeah. And a light show is when you get a psychedelic illumination effect because yeah. someone has lights on their fingers and does this. And, and at called... the same time, you get an aggressive... What's it called when they rub their head? Mash-up. Mash mash no, right. marinating. The other thing is <laughs> oh, you got to be <laughs> marinating. Right. So that video uh, was obviously... We just learned about this kind of culture and we decided to insert that culture. That is a very specific kind of dancing as well. So, um, is that called hacking? Yeah, it's, called, called, it's called, called hacking. There's some people you that are good absolutely with amazing at hacking. Uh, the back injury is still with me to this day, but uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. To try and increase production value, we had basically, as Marty's dancing, I had an aerosol can and I'm blasting it. Um, our friend um, Ross uh, was in the music video, who also cameos in the intro sequence of the Unicorn Circuit. Hello to all 38 of you. Uh, and we had uh, Gab there, who makes our graphics. He was uh, the space wizard and um, so that was that. We're getting towards the end of our list, but there's one that we just can't go past and it is Wasabi? the Dentist Jet. The European beast known as hashtag Team Dentist Jet that's been owned by a dentist with very questionable sexual habits. My Saab 900 Turbo got a JDM makeover, dropped on lowered springs, a massive front mount intercooler, a boost controller, blow off valve, pod filter, aftermarket wheels, and a straight pipe from the turbo back. Introducing Wasabi. Even though I only had a tiny budget and it's not very conventional, my inspiration for this Swedish car was to modify it in a Japanese JDM style. I 
Turbo Wasabi. The dentist jet. I didn't know Wasabis were so good until I owned one, and there's four other people out there that agree with me. The car looked great. Why is it called I think a it looks jet? fantastic. Why is it called a dentist jet? Because apparently a huge proportion of people that are into oral care professionally yep. um, drive Saabs. Uh, they, they drive Saabs. Mine did. And Saabs also, uh, the Saab also makes jets. So that became the dentist jet. Um, I absolutely love that car. car and a really cool video. So Basically weird. the end of it, there was a series of challenges where we do some Macca's tray skids, um, brushing teeth with wasabi, which was actually the worst, one of the worst things we've done on this show ever. Yes, definitely. Big wasabi on a thing and doing that. There was a tofu challenge where you had to try and drift while not spilling tofu. That was an initial D inspired thing. What are you looking at, Martin? I'm trying to find the. Are you trying I to thought, find something? No, there's some. Is there some, there's, is there some wasabi, wasabi leftovers? Wasabi memorabilia up there. I'm just trying to spot it. I can see two sexy stuff. Okay. I can see stuff from all sorts of cars. I was just Maybe to we see should have a look it. at that wall afterwards at some point. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so. Um, uh, but one of the things we had to do was this tofu challenge, which was obviously inspired by initial D. Now, Martin, I only noticed when I looked back through the footage. You didn't complete the challenge. What? You there is footage which I can show people right now of you throwing your tofu out the window. And again the other way. Oh wow, well, that's too hard. Yeah, but I, I hooked a mad skid afterwards. Yeah, but the idea was to get back with the tofu and see how much had been spilt. But you, I don't know if we marked you down in that video. I hope we did. <laughs> but that that should have been a markdown. Uh, anyway, wasabi. I absolutely loved that one. And now, Martin. I think that brings us to the last one. No, there's, there's one or two. I, I have to mention Miss Daisy. Oh my gosh, it's fast. Oh my gosh, the thing is up on its rear two wheels. This is out of control. Oh my God, it is so fast. That is the most frightened I've ever been on a drag strip ever. Oh, that is crazy. That was a EJ powered Beetle, STI Beetle that we re rebuilt and we pumped it down. I was too scared to drive it. We pumped, yeah, we pumped it down a dragway. Um, I was scared of it as well. It had its really, to, to handle the power, it had this real specific clutch that was very difficult to drive. And that's one of the reasons why people did ask at the time, well, how come you haven't used it for lots of other stuff? It's like, yeah. it was one of the hardest cars to drive ever and at speed, it was very unstable. All the weight went to the back. You basically, steering input did nothing. So you're kind of steering it with the throttle. Yeah. Um, but it was fast, it was so fast. The dragway wouldn't let us, because of how we were filming it, let us run timing. I was, I was about it was to just address a, that. Just is a, there, is that a lot of people were saying like why didn't you actually show us the, the mile times basically the way that it works there's a certain license insurance safety at a certain time of the day which is the Wednesday night drags they turned all of that stuff on before that point in time we couldn't run times because that would seem I think it was something to do with competition and they didn't have insurance or there wasn't cover for that so they very kindly let us use the drag strip but we weren't allowed to use the time that's a tricky thing to explain in a YouTube video and sometimes you just edit that out hey guys we can't run a time because it's also drawing attention to something that's not ideal for us either based on the cars um, that, we, that's why based on the cars we raced we estimated like a low 11 yeah which is about right I reckon for that power and, and the grip that we had and everything yeah. but uh, it, it is one of the classic cars of mighty car mods as well as Probably the most iconic video of Mighty Car Mods is the budget street cred. That is the Mark III Golf that um, I bought, had no reverse, covered in rust. Um, and then the moment of that, which was a genuine mistake and absolutely not a setup at all, was taking it to the Volkswagen meet and arriving and the guy saying, this is a Honda meet, this little moment here. Tell us a bit about Eurofest. 
Eurofest? Honda Fest? What are you talking about? What? Isn't today no. isn't today Eurofest? No, it's a JDM yard meet. All Hondas. Eurofest was last weekend. Oh really? Oh sh. Now that there was not like we weren't deliberately trolling and like going, let's take it to the Honda meet. We literally got the date wrong and we went, well, we've still got to finish our video. Yeah. It turned out to be one of the most amazing things of all time. But driving, I was embarrassed yeah, driving same. through all of those people. Uh, we've been pulled over on the way there, haven't we? I'd, yeah, we've been pulled oh, over you for were driving. Highway Patrol, just because of the wheels. They're like, dude, the wheels. I'm like, yeah, I know. And so that's, again, why the Rusty Golf didn't remain on the road <laughs> and yeah, remain driving. Too because defectable. It was just too defectible. And it's actually not fun driving it when it's like that. Uh, and it turns out that meet, I think, was at JDM Yard, which is a Honda shop. Yes, <laughs> which, which no we found doubt we've had more to do with since. <laughs> Um, so that has been some of the moments of Mighty Car Mods. Uh, there is one more that I want to speak about, which um, for me, uh, when we're talking about making this video, we thought like if there's one moment that really stands out in Mighty Car Mods, like if you can choose one, what would it be? Um, and um, I think for us, it's uh, a video that's actually on MTM TV too. Uh, we got contacted by Make-A-Wish and there was a young boy who was really sick uh, called Keegan who'd asked if he could spend some time with us. Um, and we went and spent some time with him and he was just the most beautiful, courageous, brave um, young man. In and out of hospital his just... entire life, so he was born with some issues that meant he, he just had to go in and out like everyone basically on a week to week basis. Really, really strong parents who just helped him through all that and you know, helped look after him. Yep. Really, really into cars and because he did have some cars at, at, when he was towards his, um, when he was older, he did have some cars he was working on with his dad. Uh, but again, when he was in hospital, Mighty Car Mods. Yes. He'd just, he just watched every single thing and he'd like email us and tell us about what he thought. It was really, really cool. So on our way down to the basement, we're going to see young Keegan's car that he brought along to show us. Take us to the awesomeness. Oh, right, man. That's great. Oh, it. man. That is so cool. Did you make of that? Did you buy that off an old person? Uh, yeah. You bought it off an old person? Yeah, You can tell. Much. That's so nice, man. <laughs> That's unreal. You don't see him this clean anymore, hey? Oh, it's so good. I've got the blinds and everything. Oh, really and he got rare. a cap polish for you because he was so happy. <laughs> it looks fantastic. Out. Look how nice it is in here. Are you going to pump it? Yeah. It's so good. So good. Oh, really? At the FM radio. Oh, it feels real good. I mean, there's been points where, yeah, I've just felt awful. And I'm like, oh, just go out for a drive. That'll make me feel better. And it does, every time. Because you've been close to dying like a number of times, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, three, four times. I think that's one of the cool things about cars, man, that you just can, you just get in them and escape, you know? You just, you escape from everyday life. Yeah. And it is good. It's yeah, it's it's nice. You can go for a drive, forget about everything. Yeah, and so we had a really nice kind of, um, some really nice moments with him, chatting with him on the phone and kind of keeping up with him. Remember we uh, let him drive the STI? So uh, we, we, we did, because he, Len, yeah. So we had to go to Melbourne. We only had a short time to do it, but we had to go to Melbourne and we were like, do we get a hire car? We can't shop in a hire car. That's not cool. He wanted we to drive have STI, time. So. We don't have time to drive it that far. He was really into Subarus, probably some uh, Supergram's influence there. Anyway, um, I ended up just ringing Subaru and being like, can, can we have something cool? And they went, go to the dealer, we'll work it out. And we drove out in an STI and, um, and then he's, they're like, don't let anyone else drive it and we're like sure yeah no go, worries and we're like <laughs> you want to drive and said to his parents can you drive so um uh yeah um, um unfortunately um he passed away a couple of years ago but uh, marty and i stay in regular contact with his parents uh and um they reached out to me recently actually after um i'd lost my dad and made a film about that on um mcm tv2 and some other things and they've just been really kind mm. to us haven't they yeah. and they're just the most loveliest people and um so i think you know that's probably the ultimate Mighty Car Mods moment. I think that to me is like the one that I think about the most and the one that has had um, probably the biggest impact on me. Um, but also um, meeting a lot of you over the years as, as well. Um, yeah. Whether it's just in the street or at the supermarket or at a Mighty Car Mods yeah. meet and, and hearing everybody's stories has been amazing. And we've done a lot of those meets um, all over Australia, all over the world. It's something we love doing. They're, they're hard to organise, they're a big thing, but they are a lot of fun. And seeing all the cars that you guys um, are working on and it always changes, you know, you might see do a meet two years back to back and suddenly it's all different which is really really cool and the experience and also like guys I met in the street these days who were like 
25, like, man, I started watching you when I was eight. And I'm like, well, that makes me feel old. But they loved it. And they've literally grown up with this thing. And yeah, this yeah. thing that they've been able to watch for free. Yeah, there's some ads and sponsors. But, like, they've been able to watch it the whole time um, without being paywalled or whatever. And, uh, and, and got a lot from it, which is really cool. So there seems to be, like, a lot, of, uh, a lot of love there. Yeah, I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of what we've done because, you know, like, no one gave it to us. It was just a thing that we kind of invented ourselves. It's changed over the years as it's needed to. We've changed over the years. You know, I'm a different person now than I was 15. 16 years ago uh, but we still absolutely love what we're doing and um we'll probably be doing it for another 16 years at least won't we Martin? Oh, okay. like what else are we going to do well in some in some where form, else who else is going to pay me to eat stuff out of the back of an old car <laughs> it's going to really? remain in, a, in, a, in some kind of form it's chopped and changed i mean look we're in a shed now so we don't get rained on that's a huge change from being on a driveway we ended up with super garage which was a game changer for being able to like make the videos and make them a little bit quicker and have the equipment so it's safer and more and easier to work on cars in super garage with a hoist which is a massive change it's only like two years ago yeah um, and so we don't know what the next changes are but you know we're always sort of keeping our eyes open for for those sort of changes and being able to do the stuff that we really really enjoy and just i'm just keeping my eyes open on marketplace just bring the just bring the fun and the excitement which is regardless of which car it is it's all about that sort of fun and the excitement and and using your skills using your brain using your body and making stuff well, thank you very much, everybody, for checking out this video. Probably went a little bit longer than we expected. Uh, the last 12 months have been absolutely huge. There's been so many things happening with Mighty Car Mods. Uh, we're going to take a couple of weeks off, Martin. Oh, I hope a so. well-deserved couple of weeks off. Yeah. So uh, videos will be kicking back along on the channel again in a few weeks' time. But for now, like we'll still be on the Instagrams and everything else, but we're just going to take a couple of weeks off. Well, um, well you say off, but there's just stuff brewing up. Well, in we're going to be working well, on that. Well, that's going to be brewing, and that's yeah. going to be brewing, and that's going to be at the shop getting... Yeah, you'll see. I mean, really what it is, it's just preparing for the next things that are coming out. But also, um, there's a couple of road trips we want to do, a couple of people we want to see, a couple of things we want to organise, uh, and a couple of new cars that we bought as well. So we want to kind of get working on those. So yeah, we'll, we'll be back again in a few weeks. Until then, thank you very much for watching the show. If you do want to support us, it really does help. You can grab something from the Mighty Mod Shop. If you don't have the capacity to do that, no worries. Just enjoy the videos. And um, there it is. Good on you, Martin. See you later. You're all right, mate. You are too. We mate. made a thing. Yep. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye.